Hello there, world history people. Mr. Brown's going to start off this class by telling you an overview of the ancient world. I'm going to move through history real, real quick, so do your best to keep up, follow along, and write what you see. Uh, I'll just have you know I used to teach all these topics in like three months, but now I'm going to do them in two videos, so let's power through. All right, ancient world, living it up. There's the Acropolis in Greece. I'm going to talk to you about this. Uh, here's the seven wonders of the ancient world. These are going to be referenced. And then here's some Greek dudes battling it out. And then this is what they thought the world was. Africa, Europe, Asia. And in the middle right there, the Middle East. Always an important part of world history. Okay. So this is uh, Mr. Brown's writing system. This is pretty important to know. If you see something in red, it means don't write it down. If you see something in black, it means write it down. If you see something in purple, it means it's very important. You should write it down. Also, maybe highlight it, underline it, uh, use a different pen, something like that. Uh, each one of my tests will have a question relating to every single purple word. So make sure you know these purple words really, really well. All right, that's my writing system. Let's keep moving on. All right, so let's start off with where did humans come from? What's going on? Well, uh, for two million years, early humans slash human-like creatures like Neanderthals wandered around the world in small groups of about 20 to 50 people hunting big animals like the woolly mammoth, the giant sloth, these giant bison, uh, also like giant antler reindeer kind of things. Um, and uh, the this is just what the vast majority of the human experience was on this planet. It was a tribe of people chasing big animals, throwing spears at them, and eating those big animals. Uh, in fact, we uh, were so collectively good at this, we uh, ate all the giant sloths down to extinction. No more giant sloths exist. Uh, also, woolly mammoths, well, they were existing for a while longer, but ultimately, uh, climate change ended the woolly mammoths. But um, yeah, humans were very, very successful hunters and basically rose to the top of the food chain. Um, interesting facts. Uh, there were no loners, okay? Humans naturally congregate in these societies about 20 to 50. And uh, something that I think is interesting in my life, I know like it's hard for me to keep track of more than 50 friends. You know, maybe I can have 20 friends, but once you get more than 50 people in your life, you kind of start losing track of them. Um, they all believed in unorganized religions. That's true. All of these tribal humans had a belief system. They... Uh, they never, didn't really get involved into science and learning at this time, but they were like, oh, you know, it's a thunderstorm. This is a, a sign of anger from the gods or something like that. So every early human had a form of religion, and I think that's a really interesting concept to explore in class. All right, moving on. So these are those giant sloths I was talking about. Here's a picture of me hanging out with one of those baby giant sloths. I'm a hungry man, always ready to eat sloth. Uh, they are hunting reindeers and woolly mammoths. Okay, so around the year 10,000 BC, so this is roughly 12,000 uh, years ago, the world got hotter. The ice age ended. And those big delicious animals, you know, we, they, we were hunting them so much and the climate was changing. Eventually all those big animals got wiped out. So the question is, what is humanity going to do? What are we going to eat especially? And this is really seen as the beginning of human history, this nice round number of 10,000 BC. Okay, let's check it out. So here's humans. Now the Ice Age is ending. What are they going to do? Got to figure something out. So 10,000 BC, humans switched from being a almost entirely meat-based diet and us being carnivores hunting animals around the world to becoming farmers. And the really cool thing is farming just kind of popped up spontaneously in like seven different spots all over planet Earth. Uh, these humans couldn't hunt those big animals anymore, so they're like, hey, look, let's find a spot where we can just grow plants and we'll eat plants. And uh, yeah, huge difference in our diets. Um, and all these cultures popped up in river valleys all fairly close to the equator of planet Earth. Uh, why the equator? Well, probably because it has the best weather. Uh, no snow to deal with. Pretty consistent weather all year round. 
um, and these river valleys. You got to have water if you want to grow plants. Um, and valleys also have a lot more stable temperature and valleys are a lot more easily protectable than just being out on a big giant open landscape. So those are some of the answers there. All right, here's uh, some humans doing the farming thing. These are some of those early humans, uh, civil, uh, like the, the start of civilization. Look, we got pet dogs. We're already getting some, some animals to help out with our farming. Um, here we are using this early form of irrigation. We're changing how a river flows into a city. Uh, here's one of those first cities in Iraq. And these are all the spots on planet Earth where cities were created in roughly 10,000 BC, but cities in China, India, Iraq, Egypt, Mexico, and uh, South America. Okay, but the first real big civilizations on planet Earth were in modern day Iraq. And this whole area is called Mesopotamia. Uh, they really got going around 6,000, maybe 5,000 BC. And these early civilizations creating, created writing and organized religion. Uh, interesting fact, the oldest writing we've ever found in the history of the world were some of these writing tablets that look like this in Iraq. And uh, they actually managed to translate the writing tablet. And it says something like, don't buy cows from Steve. Steve is a liar. You know, it's it's basically like I got a bad deal, and that's that's what uh, so much writing was about. Um, and also, if you ever do go to this part of the world, you'll find all kinds of these old tablets from you know six thousand years ago, which were sort of like a an IOU form or like a really basic form of money. So that's that's really why we created language so we could keep track of our debts. And who, who owes us what? So that's pretty cool. All right, moving on. So these are all the ancient uh, cities that were in Iraq. And a lot of these ancient cities failed. And uh, I can elaborate on that more in class. But there's so many reasons why a city would rise and fall. Uh, here's some of those early Iraqi uh, settlements. This is, uh, I think, the city of Babylon. It's got these blue gates. And yep, there's the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. It's a really famous uh, building from the past. And these are those old tablets. Okay, so after Mesopotamia and Babylon became a thing, well, actually, this is still before Babylon, uh, ancient Egypt rose up in power. And their big thing is the Nile River. The Nile River is the longest river in the world, and it's probably the most awesome river in the world. And uh, I can really say that because all around Egypt is a big old desert, but the Nile River has some of the best farmland right along the banks of the river uh, anywhere in the world. And the ancient Egyptians used that farmland really, really well. They grew all kinds of food. And with that extra food, they managed to build more structures and have a more developed culture. And uh, the, the Great Pyramids were built in 2600 BC and they were the tallest structures in the world until the year 1889 when they were finally overtaken by the Eiffel Tower in Paris. But that's still pretty impressive that these buildings that were built 2,600 years ago held that record for almost 5,000 years. And uh, I'll zoom in on this picture, which is cool, but it shows you the pyramids as they looked when they were originally finished. And there was a giant white crystal at the top of the big pyramid in Egypt and when the sun would hit it in the daytime, this giant light would reflect in all directions. It would be this big light beacon for everyone. And uh, we kind of emulate that uh, monument here in Las Vegas, but our pyramid has a big light that goes off at night, not during the day. So that's, that's our difference there. Um, all right, let's check it out. So here's some of those hieroglyphics on ancient Egyptian structures. Shows you people always think about how we're gonna get food. And the new way humans get food is by farming. So this is a huge development in world history. Uh, here's the Nile River from space. And you can see that all of Egypt is this just kind of sandy desert with the exception of the river and all around it is green because they're growing food. And this is what the Nile looks like on the ground. Here's the Nile at night. So you see everybody lives by the river. That makes sense. Uh, King Tut, Pharaoh of ancient Egypt here, they are building the pyramids. And that's the pyramids as they looked when they were originally finished. Pretty cool stuff. Um, all right, I'll stop it here and do the next one in the next video. Peace out.